single out salute. I'm Lord Matre, the hip hop futurist. You're now tuned into the Super Longevity Institute podcast. This evening, I have a special guest. He's a leading medical authority in the field of anti aging medicine and preventive medicine. He graduated from Brandeis. And D is University in 1968 and the University of Florida School of Medicine in 1979. He spent 15 years working as a community family doctor in the Colorado mountains. He has also served as the international medical director at Vital Life, the wellness division of Bum Run Grad Hospital in Bangkok, Bangkok, Thailand. He is the founder of Grossman Wellness Center in Colorado. It's a state-of-the-art clinic that helps patients prevent disease, get early detection of disease, and measures your biological age. He is also a co-author of three books with inventor Ray Curzo, The Fantastic Voyage, The Temperate Solution of a Healthy Life, and Transcend, Nine Steps to Living Forever. Ladies and gentlemen, the hip-hop, ladies and gentlemen, hip-hop futurists, transhumanists worldwide, Dr. Terry Grossman, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on. How are you feeling this evening? Pleasure as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming on. Um, let me just tell the audience out there. I have every single one of these books, by the way. Actually, these books is what helped me get into transhumanism, and just get helped me get into life extension. Um, Dr. Terry Grossman, can you tell us how and why you went from community family doctor to anti-aging? Uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty easy to answer that question because uh, I began to experience the aging process <laughs> and I didn't like it. <clears throat> yeah, I was in my late 40s and uh, I had suffered an injury, oh. a ski injury. Oh, uh, Living in the Colorado mountains, that's not uncommon to happen. Yeah. <clears throat> And my knee hurt all the time. And since I was unable to continue uh, with my normal activities, bike riding, skiing, running and whatnot, I began to gain weight and my knee hurt all the time. Uh, and I didn't like those changes that were occurring. And prior to that, I used to say, I always had a reason for things hurting. And then after that, I just wake up in the morning and things would start hurting for no known reason. And this, uh, struck me as being part of getting older and I didn't like it. And I happened to be leafing through a, a medical journal uh, that I received and they, they listed at the end of the journal some medical conferences that were being held. And there was one for an organization called the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Mm -hmm. Now this was in 1993. Mm -hmm. And in 1993, there was nothing known as anti-aging medicine. There was no concept. Yeah. I mean, the idea that aging was in need of medicine or disease m didn't make any sense. Nobody understood what anti-aging was. Right. So since I was experiencing the aging, these aging processes in my own body, I decided to go to Las Vegas and attend this conference. Mm -hmm. And I did, and it opened my eyes to an entirely different world of medicine than what I'd been practicing prior to that. Prior to that, I'd been pretty much a conventional doctor doing the things I'd learned in medical school. And after that meeting, uh, I no longer was satisfied with that and wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to essentially diagnose and treat the aging process as best I was able to. And I've been oh, doing oh. it ever since then. Wow. Um, I know that you also, okay, let me... How did you how did you meet Ray Kurzweil? Uh, I was researching my first book, uh, The Baby Boomer's Guide to Living Forever. Mm -hmm. And I went to a meeting um, about nanotechnology. And we were standing in the lunch line. And there was this gentleman that was discussing nutritional supplements mm -hmm. with another man. And I had already been practicing anti-aging medicine for a few years by then, so I knew a little bit about nutritional supplements, and I uh, entered the conversation with them, and actually, uh, Ray and I got into a little bit of a discussion, because uh, he, he was very, um, he takes a lot of supplements and knows a lot about it, and I had some different opinions, 
So we got into a little bit of a debate. And when he got home and he did some research, he realized, you know, maybe this, this is a doctor that I might not, you know, I wouldn't mind working with. So he flew from his home in Boston to my clinic in Denver and became one of my longevity patients, one of my anti-aging wow. patients. So that was the beginning of our meeting. And then over the course of the next couple of years, we sent so many emails back and forth to one another covering so many topics that one day Ray said, you know, we have so much information here, we could make this into a book. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. So Ray's very organized and he took our 10,000 emails what? that we've written to one another <laughs> and pigeonholed them into different categories. Mm -hmm. And that actually became the framework of our first uh, book that we wrote together uh, called Fantastic Voyage. We started writing in 2002 and got published in 2004. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Fantastic Voyage? I bought that book years ago, man. It changed my life. Thank you for writing well, it. Thank you very much thank uh, you. for that nice comment. Uh, the, the subtitle of this book, I think, tells a lot about what the book's about. So it's called Fantastic Voyage, Live Long Enough to Live Forever. And the idea behind that, we were very specific in the word. We didn't say Fantastic Voyage how to live forever. We said live long enough to live forever because we back then in 2002, 2004, didn't know what to do to live a longer, significantly longer period of time. And quite honestly, we're only right now, uh, you know, almost two decades later, beginning to, you know, open that door to what we need to do to live significantly longer than our ancestors have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in that book, we went through a series of things that people could do, tests that they could do and things that they could do to take advantage, to essentially leapfrog. We talked about three bridges. Mm -hmm. Bridge one was the medical technologies that were available back in the early part of the 2000s. Mm -hmm. Then we said, OK, what we want to do is take advantage of those technologies to live long enough to take advantage of bridge two which is things like stem cell therapies mm -hmm. and genomics therapies and genetic engineering and things along those lines that are actually beginning to take place today. Mm -hmm. right. So we are now on bridge two. And then the idea with bridge two is to live long enough and stay in good health long enough that we can take advantage of bridge three, which is the nanotechnology revolution, which Ray predicts may occur even in the 2020s Although we had written in our books, it'd probably be more likely in the 2030s. Yeah. Um, tell us about the Grossman Wellness Center and you found it in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so when, when I made the transition from uh, standard family practice, mm -hmm. which I had practiced from my graduation in medical school uh, and residency uh, from 1980 to 19. 95, the end of 1994, I practiced standard medicine. People had high blood pressure, I wrote them a prescription for blood pressure medicine. They had high cholesterol, I wrote them a prescription for cholesterol medicine. But after that, I started to become very interested in anti-aging medicine and nutritional medicine. And I began to talk to my patients about doing things a little bit differently. So if someone had high blood pressure, I said, would you be interested in maybe changing your diet? and changing your lifestyle and taking these supplements as opposed to taking a prescription for medicine. Mm. And I actually was quite shocked since my training had been as a conventional doctor that almost 90% of the patients said, yeah, I'd like to do that instead. I don't want the prescription. Right. Uh, so more and more, I was in a small town prior to that. I was living in the mountains of Colorado in a small town. Mm -hmm. And as I began to change the nature of my practice from a standard, right, you know, here's a disease, write a, write a prescription for a drug, instead for take these supplements, within uh, six months or so, the pharmacist in the town, we were only one pharmacy in this little town, wow. came to me and said, what are you doing over there? You're going to make us go bankrupt. We're not mm -hmm. filling any prescriptions anymore. Wow. So I said, well, I've changed my style of practice. I'm using a lot more nutrients and supplements than I am medications. So my suggestion is you add a supplement division to your drugstore. Mm -hmm. 
And he, the, there were two pharmacists on that drugstore. They did so, and they did very well, basically opening a little mini health food store that did probably more business than their pharmacy did after that. Wow. Um, let me backtrack a little bit. Can you tell people who's Ray Kurzweil? Because, you know, I know he won a, a Grammy in 2016 for his Kurzweil, for his technological feats in, in, in music, like the Kurzweil that can mimic, a, um, you know, uh, 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 different instruments. Um, can you just tell my, 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 my audience who's the hip hop generation who might not know who's Ray Kurzweil? Oh, Ray Kurzweil is... Uh... He's got, he wears many hats. Uh, first of all, he's an engineer by training, uh, but he's an inventor. I would say it, most of his life, he created some of the most amazing inventions that anyone has ever created. Uh, one of his inventions, for instance, was the Kurzweil keyboard. And it is, you know, the type of keyboards that will play a piano or play like a harpsichord or sing like a human voice and all of those things, which really was quite novel back when he invented it, you know, a couple decades ago. Well, he invented that. And other things that he invented is the uh, flatbed scanner. So now it's commonplace. We're, we're just used to taking a piece of paper and putting it on the scanner and it scans it. Well, back in the 90s, this technology didn't exist. Well, he invented it. And he also invented uh, speech, recognition. speech recognition. So the fact that, you know, we can, I, in fact, my notes today in my medical practice earlier today, when I was seeing patients, uh, my secretary uh, was out this week to on vacation. So she wasn't here to transcribe what I, what I, what I said to the patient. So what I did instead is I just dictated it because I'm a very bad typist. I just dictated it into the speech recognition that's built into, uh, the software of my computer. Mm. Well, that speech recognition software was invented by Ray Kurzweil. So he's done many, many uh, world changing inventions. Currently, he's working at Google on a project to essentially create uh, a similitude of the human brain. And so they can study the brain with this. And I think eventually their goal, if I'm not mistaken, is to be able to enhance our human intelligence to where we're able to communicate more quickly, uh, able to assimilate information more quickly. And, you know, basically up until now, both the human body and medicine have been analog technologies. Mm -hmm. In other words, we did this this year. Next year, maybe we did 2X. Next year, we did 3X. Next year, we did 4X. Well, nowadays medicine has become a digital technology so we go from 1x to 2x to 4x to 8x to 16x and like that so the 10 years later we're doing things a thousand times better and faster than we did before and so this is being applied to the human body to analysis of the brain and the medicine itself so medicine is no longer this analog old-fashioned technology mm -hmm. when we used to look for a drug for instance how do we find a new drug? Well, a group of explorers, adventurers, would go down to Africa or South America, and they would root around for some uh, weeds and some bugs mm. and some leaves and some roots, and they would bark and whatnot from trees, and they'd bring it back, and they would do all these tests on it. Well, to do a new drug today, we don't have to do that. We can create, this is, this is what we want to create, make the shape, and the, basically the software is able to help us to develop what we need to know. So digital drug discovery, digital uh, mechanisms like that have really speeded up things. For instance, wow. with the COVID epidemic, when they, when they developed the COVID vaccine, mm -hmm. it's my understanding, it took like a year mm -hmm. from when it first they started production or started research until it was available. But they actually discovered the vaccine itself within the first three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time was simply testing for safety and production. But the actual drug discovery only took a matter of weeks, which, you know, back decades ago would have taken quite a bit longer. Wow. Info information technology. 
at its finest, right? Medicine is now an information technology. Can you tell us, can you tell my audience who might not know what information technology, what is information technology? Because, mm -hmm. well, information technology basically means that we use the computer or computer intelligence to help us solve problems. So rather than trying to, you know, if I were trying to do this complicated mathematical uh, set of equations and uh, difficult uh, problems, it would take me maybe all day or a week to do that. Mm -hmm. But I can plug it into the computer and it's done in within a millisecond. So this is this is basically information technology is utilizing computers to help us to solve problems. Thank you for it for um because I don't want to leave anybody behind. Um, okay, let me. You know, I heard a lot of stuff about metformin in the news. I've seen an interview with you talking about metformin. Is metformin still really good to take for um some people? Well, metformin is a diabetes drug mm -hmm. and it's actually the most common drug for type 2 diabetes not type 1 diabetes is one where people need to take insulin yeah. but 10 times as many people have type 2 diabetes which is more typically due to lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, overweight poor diet mm -hmm. things along those lines can lead to type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. and the drug that's used to treat that lower blood sugar is called metformin well, it turns out that metformin activates an enzyme in the body. It's called AMPK. Okay. And when you activate this AMPK enzyme, animals live longer. So they've done some studies and they found if we're able to activate AMPK, we can increase life expectancy. Well, previous to this, the most common way to activate AMPK was cutting calories. So you might have heard of calorie restriction, yes, I have. where we restrict the amount we eat. So if we normally eat 2,000 calories a day, <clears throat> maybe we cut it down to 1,500 calories a day. We will live longer if we do that. Mm -hmm. Well, we've also found, in addition to cutting calories, we could take metformin, and we can also activate AMPK and live longer. So in all the animal experiments that have been done, animals that like mice that were given metformin in their drinking water live longer. Mm -hmm. They've also tested metformin in the prevention and treatment of cancer, and they found it's a very effective uh, strategy for both preventing cancer and treating cancer once patients develop it. So there are a lot of uses wow. for metformin. Uh, I've personally been taking it for about 11 years. Really? Um, yeah, I've been using it as an anti-aging and anti-cancer strategy. So uh, I haven't developed any side effects from it. Um, and I feel like it's a benefit. And I've written hundreds, if not thousands of prescriptions for it over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, I continue to believe that it has benefit. Now, maybe there are some newer medications that are on the horizon that'll yeah. work better and we'll make that transition or maybe we'll continue to use it and add these other ones as well. But mm -hmm. I think for people over the age of 35 or 40, it's worth exploring. Now, is it a perfect drug? Is it completely free of side effects? No. Does it, uh, like for instance, it increases risk of diabetes. Mm. Uh, James, but the, it, it does a few other things as well. Um, like uh, more recently it's shown that it blunts the effectiveness of exercise in, you don't get as much good from exercise when you take metformin. So there's a little bit of a downside mm. to it as well. So. We wouldn't want to take it unless we were experiencing the aging process to some degree. And the aging process really doesn't kick in till at least 40 years of age. Mm, wow. Thank you for that. And I guess metformin, it, I guess because of the sugar dynamic, because of the, the sugar dynamic, um, what cancer is, I, I guess they say cancer feeds on sugar. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, cancer cells can only eat one food. And that is um, sugar. They can't eat protein. They can't eat fat. They can only eat sugar. And somehow metformin interrupts that ability of cancer cells to access sugar and eat it. And I apologize. I did make a, a mistake previously. I said one of the side effects of metformin was increased diabetes. That, that's obviously 
untrue. Right. <laughs> it's used to treat diabetes. Treat diabetes, right. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about the three bridges in your book that'll lead to, uh, that'll help you uh, live longer to when the technology yeah, so is ripe enough to help us live? Yeah, longer? we talked about this. You know, bridge one is the technologies of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was really of uh, early 2000s, what we were talking about available then. Mm-hmm. And then bridge two is biotechnology. Mm-hmm. And it involves things like stem cells, which are being more and more commonly used today. It involves things like doing genomics testing, finding out what genes we have. <clears throat> and we used to think before that whatever genes you have kind of predict what's going to happen to you. Now we just think that genes are like a blueprint. They suggest what's going to happen to you. And by making proper lifestyle choices, you in many cases won't get the diseases that the genes would make you have a higher probability. In other words, you might have a gene that says you're going to have a higher risk of breast cancer, or you have a gene that you're going to have a higher risk of developing a heart attack. Well, by making the proper lifestyle choices, that's not going to happen. So those are things that are going on with the genetics revolution today. Uh, and that's a real solid part of bridge two. And then that'll take us to bridge three, where we're actually able to engage in nanotechnology. Nanotechnology refers to the ability to make things on an extremely small scale. and there are now books that have been published on nanotechnology where we're able to design like red blood cells that float in the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. And what red blood cells do is they pick up oxygen from our lungs and they deliver it to the other parts of our body. Right. Well, we could make a nanobiotic red blood cell and it would be much more efficient than our biological red blood cells. And if we were like, for instance, somebody has a heart attack and their heart stops. Well, what do we do today? We do CPR. We press on their chest, we breathe in their mouth. Actually, that's a pretty inefficient way to get oxygen into the brain Mm -hmm. because the brain starts to die within four minutes if you don't have a heartbeat. How about if we had a syringe full of nanobots that were able to mimic these red blood cells and a person had a heart attack, their heart stops. We inject the nanobots in their bloodstream, they circulate. They provide oxygen to all the tissues. We bring the patient into the hospital. They're doing just fine. And oh, by the way, another part of Bridge 2 is cloning. We've cloned an extra heart for them out of their own tissues, which we've had available in storage. We'll have backup organs so that if we ever need a new heart, if we need new lung, new pancreas, new liver, we have backup parts available to us. Mm. So these are all technologies that are part of Bridge 2. So uh, using bridge three, using bridge two, putting these things together can really lead to a lot of beneficial uh, effects as far as our current life expectancy is 124 years. We cannot live more than 124 because of these things called telomeres. Uh, They're the end caps on our chromosomes. And every time a cell divides, a little piece of telomere gets clipped off. Mm. And when the telomere gets to a certain shortness, the cell dies. And when enough cells die, well, so do we. Mm. So our telomeres will only last at most 124 years. And now we're looking at technologies where we're able to make telomeres longer. When we're successful at doing that, then it's not going to be 124, it's going to be 134. 144, 154, et cetera. So uh, Aubrey de Grey, who is one of the most prominent futurists in the world today as well, in his book has predicted that the first individual to live 1,000 years wow. is alive already today. Wow. Shout out to Dr. Aubrey de Grey. He was on the show, uh, I think, two weeks ago. Um. Okay, well, question for you. CoQ10. I just had a buddy of mine who just had a heart attack. What is the? I know that you advocate for supplementation. It's what's the benefits of supplementation? Why should we supplement? And um, is the benefits of CoQ10 still um good? 
Is this the research still holds up for CoQ10? As far as yeah, CoQ10 is a it's called a coenzyme or co a, it's a covitamin. Mm -hmm. It's not really a vitamin, but it's kind of like a vitamin. Mm -hmm. And what coenzyme Q10 does is it helps the body make energy. So if a person has a heart attack and their heart isn't able to pump as effectively as before, CoQ10 can be of assistance to that heart, which is not as effective as it was before. Mm. But even more important, one of the mainstays of therapy for heart disease is lowering cholesterol. When you lower cholesterol, the main medicine they use is a group of drugs called statins. And statins lower coenzyme Q10 levels in the body. So anybody who's on a statin should definitely take extra coenzyme Q10. Mm. So it's good for energy and it's good for patients who are on statins. And given that there are tens of millions of people on statins in this country, that's a lot of people who should be taking coenzyme Q10. Um, the, the gross mint wellness symptom, if I want to become a patient, a new patient, what are some of the things that I, I will have to answer? What are some of the tests I will have to take? And um, do you you do measure biological age there? What, what, how do you do that? Well, the way we measure biological age, I'll answer the last question first and then work my way forward. Mm -hmm. um, the way we measure biological age has changed over the years. Uh, we mm -hmm. used to have a machine was called an H scan and people would breathe into it and would measure their lung function. And it would have like the earphones that you have on now. And it would put different frequencies to see how high a frequency people could hear. Cause that's something that changes with age. And then we did hold up something for them to read and see how close they could read it. Cause the older you get, the further away you have to hold things in order to read it. And it would measure your reaction time and your med memory and all these things. And it would give us, an estimation of biological age, the age your body seemed to be, mm -hmm. as opposed to your chronological age. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a pretty good test when we used it. We still use it. But then we were, I'd mentioned those telomeres at the end of the chromosomes, mm -hmm. how they get shorter and shorter and shorter as you get older and older and older. Well, if you live a healthy lifestyle, your telomeres are going to get short more slowly and if you lead an unhealthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. so you can get a measurement of biological age. And this is something that we did for several years by measuring telomere length. Now, more recently, they have found that our genes in our body, there are certain genes that are activated when you're young and turned off when you get old. And there are other genes that get turned on when you're old but aren't turned on when you're young. Mm -hmm. And this ratio of the young genes and the old genes, measuring which ones are turned on and which ones are turned off, can provide a very accurate determination of biological age. And that's the test that we're doing today. So you can see that measurements of biological age have changed over the years. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of becoming a patient at our wellness clinic, we like to you know, do a battery of of blood tests so we can get an idea, you know, check hormone levels, you know, check general blood chemistries like blood sugar and electrolytes and liver tests and kidney tests and just get general blood tests to get an idea of where a patient's coming from. And then we like to ideally see them in person. Now with COVID that hasn't been possible as mm -hmm. much as it was before mm -hmm. people either couldn't travel or hesitant travel. So we do what we can do virtually anymore. A lot of visits, we have patients that come to see us from all over the United States, all over the world. So we do a lot of things virtually, but in order for a physician in the state I live in, which is Colorado, to be able to prescribe certain medications for my patients, I have to have a face-to-face -face visit with them. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to eventually have them come to our clinic in Denver where they'll spend a day, two days, three days, even just depending on how extensive we want to do the evaluation. And then they become a patient. And then we can have our follow up visits done just like you and I are talking on a, a, a virtual platform. 
Wow. Oh, and then you could do your blood tests at home and just send me the results and things like that. So yeah. we do a combination of in-person and virtual. That's wonderful. Um, I mentioned that because in the culture, we just lost a couple of cultural icons, not just MCs or what you would call rappers. We lost a couple of really great cultural icons that was too young to die. Um, a clinic like yourself would be excellent as far as prevention and um, uh, uh, the, the certain tests that you that you take there. I think that we, we need that in hip hop for the um, people that, for the hip hoppers that are in their midlife um, <clears throat> and their cultural icons. You need to really seek out um, Dr. Terry Grossman's Wellness Center because you're gonna get you're gonna get um, tests and you're gonna get a, a whole outlook on what you can do to stay healthy and um what what are the what are the new tools that you could use to um st um stay healthy and ex hopefully extend your lifespan so when those technologies that are available that maybe that can cure the um uh some of the uh, age related issues that we have can be um conquered um do you so do you really you so do you think that in like at least 20 years we will gain control, some type of level of control of the aging process? And why is it important for us to do this? Because, you know, a lot of people don't even have the, it in mind that they can even do something about aging scientifically. They don't even know that, they, that, that, that people are seeking to try to find scientific uh, ways to do something about the aging process. They don't, you know. They don't know why they should do it. They think, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, trying to uh, cure age-related diseases. Well, um, I'll give you one example of, you know, we, we, of something that can be done today. Mm -hmm. We know that the leading cause of death is heart disease and stroke. stroke yes they cause they're number one and yeah. cancer's number two yes, so we now have a test it's between 150 and 200 dollars depending on where you are in the country mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's called the carotid imt intima media thickness and this test you just put an ultrasound probe mm. on the patient's neck, and you're able to measure the thickness of the wall of the artery and also see if there's any cholesterol plaque that's built up inside the wall of the artery. This inexpensive test does not use any radiation. It, it uses ultrasound, so it uses sound waves. So it's safe, it's inexpensive, it's accurate, and if Let's say every person in this country at 35 years of age was to do this test. They would find out if they had any plaque buildup in their arteries. And if they did, they could begin to treat it at that point. Mm. And I think that one, that one intervention could have a tremendous impact on how long people will live. You know, this idea of live long enough to live forever, it would allow people to live long enough to take advantage of what's coming in the future. So I think, met, you know, the, the too many people are dying of heart attacks, yeah. young, young age. Yes, yes. By, you know, doing this test, it just wouldn't happen. We would be able to find out that there's even just a speck of this cholesterol plaque in the arteries and we could begin to treat it at that point in time. So this is a very exciting thing that is available. Wow. It's available today. Can you tell us a little bit, a little something about C-reactive protein? Sure. Uh, C-reactive protein is one of the blood tests that we use. Um, it's used both in my world of anti-aging medicine. It's used in the world of conventional doctors. Cardiologists measure it as well. It's a measurement of inflammation. Mm -hmm. Inflammation is the common 
pathway that leads to disease. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, why do you actually have a heart attack? Well, is it because you have this cholesterol plaque in your arteries in your heart? Well, no, not really. Right. You got to have it, but it's because that plaque in the arteries gets inflamed. Right. When it gets inflamed, it ruptures, and that's what causes a heart attack. How about if you have inflammation in your knee? Mm -hmm. Well, that is what leads to arthritis and you know problems with mobility and other issues like that. Inflammation in your eyes leads mm -hmm. to macular degeneration mm -hmm. and decreased vision. So the common pathway to many diseases is inflammation. And the way we measure inflammation is with a blood test called CRP, which stands for C-reactive protein. Thank you, um, because um, I know- Oh, and I want to tell you something, just sure. for a simple takeaway. Sure. If you do that test, you find out you have inflammation in your body, you should be taking something like fish oil or flax oil, because that's a very good anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that from personal experience, because you know, once upon a time I had a ski rack, mm -hmm. and my back hasn't been the same ever since. Mm -hmm. You know, every once in a while it hurts more lately than it used to before. Well, I did a procedure recently and they said, listen, you got to go off these anti-inflammatories, fish oil is a blood thinner, v, uh, flax oil is a blood thinner. You got to quit taking it for two weeks before you do this procedure. Mm. I quit taking it and man, things hurt that I didn't know hurt before. Mm. So this stuff really does work to reduce inflammation in your body. So wow. uh, I was surprised. So anybody, everybody should be taking some fish oil or flax oil as long as they don't have like a, since it is a little bit of a blood thinner, as long as they don't have any blood thinning conditions. Right. Um, you have a supplementation company. Yeah. Cool. You have a supplementation company with um, Ray Kurzweil? I like this picture, by the way. <laughs> Y'all look cool. Yeah, guys. Ray. That, so up in the upper left is uh, a picture of Ray. Mm -hmm. Uh and I'm in the lower right. And we formed uh, a company called Transcend Longevity Products. Mm -hmm. And so when we wrote that second book, Transcend, we made some recommendation of supplements that people should take. So we've been selling supplements that we recommend uh, through that Transcend Longevity, uh, which is an online business. Wonderful. Um, why should we supplement? What is, what is it about supplementation that can benefit can benefit people? Because I know a lot of people, they have a, you know, I supplement, by the way. <laughs> I definitely supplement, and that definitely, it works. But um, some people just, they don't like popping pills. Can you just tell us um, why we should supplement? Well, they did a study, and they measured the levels of, nutrients that we need for optimal health. Mm -hmm. These would be things like vitamins and minerals. And they found that 90% of people are deficient in at least one vitamin or mineral. So one way to find out what you need is measure the levels of all of these vitamins and minerals in your body. The problem is you would spend many thousands of dollars measuring all of those things. So since we know that everybody, well, at least 90% of people are deficient in something, why not spend a few pennies a day and take a multiple vitamin mineral formula? Mm. So I think that virtually everybody should take a multiple vitamin, the fish or flax oil that I mentioned before for reducing inflammation, mm -hmm. Coenzyme Q10 that you mentioned before, I think that increases energy and it's good for everybody. And then finally, there is virtually nobody who gets enough sunlight to generate enough vitamin D yes. that we need for optimal health. So a multiple vitamin, some flax or fish oil, some CoQ10 and some vitamin D. Now that's not a boatload of pills. You know, that's three or four pills in the morning and three or four pills at night. And that really covers the basis for a lot of conditions. And I think that would improve the health of many people if they were just to take those simple supplements. Wow. Um, oh, just for a quick reference, 
What's the difference between chronological age and biological age? Well, the chronological age is the age that you are from the day you were born. So if you were born 50 years and one month and three days ago, that's your chronological age. Mm -hmm. But your biological age is the age that your body appears to be. Mm -hmm. And we discussed previously how we measure biological age, like either telomere length before that test the H scan test before, or more recently, looking at the methylation of the genes, which ones are turned on and which ones are turned off. Yeah. So we might be 50 chronologically, but we've lived a very healthy lifestyle and we're 42 biologically. Mm. Or unfortunately, it can go the other way. We haven't watched our diet. We've been smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. We've been stressing ourselves out, not getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. living a very unhealthy lifestyle. And instead of being biologically 50, we're biologically 60. So we can go either way. The good news is while we can't change chronological age, we're always getting older. We can change biological age. You wow. can get younger. Wow. That's very interesting. Um, Oh, tell us about your role as a medical director at Vital Life in um, Burn Run Grad Hospital in Bangkok, Thai. Uh, Burn Run Grad Hospital is uh, largely a medical tourism hospital. Mm. And it's very, very interesting that if we go back to like 1980 or 1990, people tour became tourists to come to the United States to get medical care because they perceived that the medical care they could get in the United States was better than what they could get at home. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if someone lived in India or someone lived in Thailand and they had the resources, they were wealthy enough to do it, they would come to the United States. They were medical tourists and they would come to the United States to have their medical care. Well, fast forward to 2015, now what's happened is India and Thailand have developed some world-class hospitals. Wow. And they're able to offer the same level of care, if not better, than what's available in the United States wow. for a fraction of the price. Wow. So, for instance, uh, one of the more expensive surgeries that people will undergo is like a heart bypass. Mm. A heart bypass one of my patients just told me that they were in the hospital. They had some complications after their bypass and their bill came back at $450,000. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even an uncomplicated bypass can easily be 150 to 200,000. Well, that surgery is available at Bumungrad, the hospital I worked at in Bangkok for maybe 25 or 30,000 dollars. So it's wow. a fraction of the price. So given the fact that you could fly round trip to Bangkok for about $3,000, wow. you can get some major surgery done or procedures done for a fraction of the price. Wow. And the doctors at that hospital at Bumagrad, many of them were trained at some of the most prestigious uh, medical universities in the, in the world. Many wow. come from Oxford and Cambridge and Harvard and Princeton and places like that. So you can get world-class care wow. for a fraction of the price in India, in Mexico, in Thailand. And I just happened to work for Bumagrad, which was voted one of the 10 best hospitals in the world. Wow. Now, Bumagrad is run by uh, a CEO. Her name is Linda Lisa Hapanya. Mm -hmm. And Linda is very interested in everything that's new in medicine. Mm. She's very interested in anti-aging medicine. Wow. She's interested in her own life and in other people's lives of what they can do to live healthy for as long as possible. And that's what we refer to as wellness medicine. So what she has done is she created an entire wellness hospital. So they have their main hospital and then 
550 bed big hospital. And then right across the, the alley, across the driveway, is a, a 14 story building that houses a wellness center. Wow. And in that wellness center, they practice, you know, all the things we've been talking about mm -hmm. measuring telomeres, uh, doing therapies to help people to reverse their biological age. Mm -hmm. They have a complementary cancer center. Wow. So they, people can go in with, with cancer and they could get the standard therapies from the board certified oncologists at Bummergrad Hospital. And then they can just come across the street and get the complementary therapies from Vital Life, which is their wellness division. So oh, wow. they had come, they had come to the United States and looked around to try to find a medical director. And uh, the CEO had read the books that I'd written with Greg Kurzweil. And I was fortunate enough to be uh, picked to occupy that, that to take that role which I did until the beginning of uh, 2020 when COVID hit mm -hmm. and it was no longer possible for foreigners to travel to Thailand. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they were in shutdown mm -hmm. and they're still in a semi shutdown. If you want to go to Thailand, you have to quarantine for 14 days wow. before you can go out. And unfortunately, I don't have 14 days right. to sit in a hotel and wait while then, then then go to work. So I had to terminate at least temporarily to spend my work over there. Wow. Um, I, 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 I think it was something on Netflix and Abby did the gray and Bill Andrews came to you. Tell us a little about that. I seen that on Netflix. I was like, this is so cool. They uh, I, think, I think there was a movie that might have showed yeah. up on Netflix it's called The Immortals. Yeah, The Immortals, yes. Well, The Immortals, and there were three main characters in that movie. Yeah. Aubrey D. Gray, uh, Bill Andrews, yeah. and myself. <laughs> wow. And uh, so, yeah, that movie was made a few years ago, uh, and it went into some depth about what Aubrey was doing to uh, essentially achieve human immortality. And uh, Bill Andrews has been one of the leading figures in uh, telomere research. Telomere. So he's been working his whole life, professional life on telomere research and what we can do to extend the length of our telomeres along those lines as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a, The Immortalist was a great film. I loved it. And I think that what you guys are doing is an inspiration. Um, it's just an inspiration. I mean, you know, uh, who do want more life? <laughs> if you could have, live, if you can extend a healthy lifespan, what do you think? All right, I hear Ray Kurzweil. He does a lot of predictions on where the technology is going and the impact it's going to have on society. Um, when do you think that we'll gain a, some type of hold on uh, uh on on aging, where though it, it, we can live at least longer than um uh 120 124 one the, you know when can we when can we when do you think we, the technology will be robust will, will be efficient enough to actually extend the lifespan 20 30 years no i don't think it's going to be that long mm -hmm. i think within the next five to ten years we will have the ability to solve the problems that have been holding us back up until now and i think honestly by the middle of this century, it won't even be of any value to talk about life, life expectancy, because I think people will be able to do, you know, fantastic things that are considered fantastic today, such as uploading our consciousness to, uh, to a digital platform. Right. And if you can do that, essentially, I think we've achieved human immortality. Yeah, definitely. Um, wow. Um, Oh, I have to ask this. Of course, I have to ask this. Are you going to co-author any more books with Ray Kurzweil? Y'all make a great team. I have all your books. I bought your books years ago. It's not like I just bought the books and I got three of them and I just got onto you. I've had these books for years. I bought the Ten Percent Solution. I bought the Transcend Ray. Kurzweil. This is what got me into life extension. And let me tell you, I live in Harlem. You know, we don't get this. I, we don't. 
most people are not thinking about life extension where I'm from, but that's <laughs> going to change very soon. I think you're, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, in answer to your question, you know, I don't know. Maybe Ray and I will write. Uh, I hope so. There was somebody that said that we were going to write at least one more book together. Please do. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that didn't happen in the future. So um, it's not, you know, Ray has uh, written a couple books since on his own. Yes, you know, he, he wrote a, a very seminal book called The Singularity is Near. Yes. Uh, yeah. And that gained a lot of traction about how the future is changing so rapidly. And then uh, a follow-up book, The Singularity is Nearer. <laughs> and yeah, then he also good. has written some other books in between. He's quite a prolific uh, author, uh, one of the true geniuses of our time, uh, working at Google, doing so many things, lecturing all over. So he's he's really uh, one of uh, our treasures that we have. As, it's, been as well, my, it's been my honor to be able to work with him. As well as yourself. And... Um... You know, people take for granted. I mean, you know, we didn't always live to the lifespan we that we have today. If if there wasn't people who went out and said, you know, uh, and and did the work, we wouldn't even live to the the right age that we live to now. We take for granted the life extension we have today, <laughs> right? Well, do you, you know, something that happened in the last year is human average human longevity in the United States for the first time fell a year and a half thanks to COVID last year. Wow. That's how big an effect that had. Yeah. But that was like a, just a, a fluke, I think. Mm. And I think that's going to change. We'll catch back up real soon. Definitely. Um, do you have any uh, recommendations on how you can stay healthy in these pandemic times? Um, well, there is a, a website FLCCC, the Frontline Coalition for COVID, <clears throat> and they outline a program. These doctors have done a wonderful job for, for humanity <clears throat> in outlining the vitamin D and the vitamin C and the quercetin and the melatonin, all the things that people can take that have been shown able to prevent COVID. So uh, there's a program that they present there is a anti-parasitic drug that they are a very strong on uh, called ivermectin. People can take ivermectin as a preventive against COVID. So for people who prefer not to get vaccinated, they've been found if they take the ivermectin, they either won't get COVID or if they do, it's a very mild case. Wow. Also, some recent research out of Israel just came out today of three different drugs that are able to prevent COVID. So we're we're learning a lot. And, you know, a year ago, we were really doing the best we could just to get by. Mm -hmm. But life is so different today. At least in the United States, things are opening up tremendously. And it's made a huge difference. And I think that we'll get a handle on this uh, problem in the near future, more than we have already. Thank you for that. Um what do you have to say to my young hip hoppers who in the future will be into the hip hop lifestyle, but they're going to be life extensionists also What who want to follow the same path that you have uh, taken? Well, I mean, I think that if you look at your health, taking care of your body as your hobby, mm -hmm. You know, people spend a lot of money on their hobbies. Yes, they sure do. And so I like to regard my health as my hobby. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if I have to spend a few bucks for some vitamins, I don't mind because I'm spending money on my hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, I could spend money on a new drum set because I do mm -hmm. play the drums. Mm -hmm. Or I could spend money or I could do both. Mm -hmm. But if you, I like to tell people, think about your body and think about your health as your favorite hobby. And if you do that, then it's not an effort. Taking those vitamins isn't hard. Getting that exercise isn't hard. Eating right isn't hard. Now, do you have to do everything perfect all the time? No. I mean, we all, it, like I say, everything in moderation, including moderation. Oh, um, I got one more question for you. I have to ask this. Melatonin. I remember I used to see all these things on melatonin. 
and the relationship between melatonin and sleep and anti-aging, is that still relevant? It absolutely is. And melatonin is one of the supplements that that FLCCC group for COVID prevention recommends. Yes, I see so that. So that's one of the supplements. It's, it's a natural hormone that's found in the brain mm -hmm. to promote sleep. So newborn babies have very high levels of melatonin, and that's why they can sleep anywhere. As we get older, our melatonin levels continue to fall until when we're very old, our melatonin levels are quite low. Well, we can supplement with melatonin, and that can be useful as a sleep aid. Melatonin is also useful for an immune stimulant. So it has a number of beneficial effects for our immune function as well. Um, and one of those effects is prevention of COVID. So for a sleep hormone, for an anti-aging hormone, for uh, its many properties, I think melatonin is definitely a good thing for people to consider. Yeah, I took melatonin when I had COVID. I work in a hospital, I took melatonin. I was up on it and I wound up fine. I didn't have to go in the hospital, I wound up fine. I definitely took melatonin, thank you for that. Um, wow, thank you for coming on the show. This is a pleasure. I really enjoy this. I really enjoy all the books that you and Ray Kurzweil wrote. You are since you're you're definitely an inspiration to me, and I hope that the hip hop community can learn something and benefit from what you're doing because we, you know, we're getting older as hip hoppers. We need to mature and advance the conversation into health and life decision. I want to, I want the hip hoppers to become advocates for the life extension for life extension um if anything any closing remarks where can they find you um what's your website well i'm easy to find online a simple search for terry grossman and they'll find my clinic uh easily and i just like to close with uh, a quote from a music group granted they weren't hip hoppers but that's they're right. still pretty cool pretty cool music group the grateful dead oh that's Keep i love them <laughs> Yeah, and, of and, and one of their most famous yeah. songs was Keep On Trucking. Keep on trying, so definitely. Keep on trucking. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Grossman. Thank you. I really Great, appreciate Dr. Grossman is a very busy man. I really appreciate he coming to the Institute and um taking the time to um build with us. We really appreciate you, Dr. Terry Grossman. Thank you. And um thank you very much for having me on. Thank you, man. If you have anything you wanna um bring, if you have anything you wanna say, we definitely will have you back on. If you have any new information, we definitely would like to know about it. Peace and one love. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. And happy anti aging to you. Happy thank anti aging. You. Thank you. Happy anti aging to you too. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. It's a pleasure to have you on.